everybody, welcome to Veltry's Country Living. Uh, today we're going to try to butcher some chickens and uh, we've had a lot of people inquire about uh, coming over and just visiting with us while we process our chickens and uh, though we haven't been able to do that uh, with too many people yet, uh, there's one eager to, to get into the pot. But as we get ready to, uh, to process these chickens today, uh, we're going to try to go ahead and, and do some filming and kind of take you through the process and show you how we do it. Now, we're not professionals by any means. Uh, we're just some homesteaders that uh, raise some chickens. Um, we, we consume their eggs and we also consume their meat. So uh, they provide for our family, so we're very thankful for them. Uh, but we're going to take you along with us today, uh, try to do a step-by-step -step process, and we'll kind of show you or explain to you different options that other people may do, but uh, mainly we're going to show you how we do it. It may not be the only way to do it, but it gets the job done. So we appreciate you coming along. All right, guys, so we're going to start the process. And uh, before we do, uh, I want to just kind of give you a heads up that there's going to be some graphic video, maybe some graphic images. So uh, if this is not really your thing or you have a queasy stomach, you may want to find one of our other videos to watch. <laughs> But uh, we got, today we're going to be processing mostly uh, the Freedom Rangers. Now we do process two different types of birds, uh, or at least that's what we've done this year so far. One is the Freedom Ranger and one is the Cornish Cross. Uh, there's been a lot of debate back and forth which one people like the most. We, we personally, we like the Cornish Cross the best. Uh, we think that it, uh, it produces a little more meat. Uh, and we like the meat a little bit better. Uh, that's just our particular uh, opinion. Uh, somebody else may have a different one. Uh, but today there's going to be an occasional Cornish cross in with this batch, but most of them will be the Freedom Rangers. Uh, they're a red chicken that looks a lot like uh, your Rhode Island Reds or New Hampshire Reds, but they're actually uh, bred and designed for their meat. So we're going to take one out of the, the coat. We've got our temperature on our boiling, our scalding pot at 150, 152, and we're just going to stick it in there, head down, holding it by their feet. Now they do make gloves that you can wear, and we're just going to dip him in and out, kind of raising him up and down. It helps clean the bird a little bit, loosen the feathers up. A lot of people will time this. I usually just kind of go by guesstimation. I think some of the bigger birds, you gotta soak just a little bit longer than what you do some of the smaller ones. And normally, you can have my assistant here check the tail feather. Now when they're pretty well ready, the tail feathers will come out fairly easy. I don't think that one's quite ready, so I'm gonna give him another dip. Usually when those tail feathers come out fairly easy, you know, they're, they're ready for the plucker. Grab another one. We've got two birds in here, and I hope I didn't over scald them. Usually when you over scald, when the feathers are off, the skin will be a brownish tint, and it'll also tear a lot easier. Um, so, but we got two birds in here. And we're going to turn it on and she's going to rinse them. All right, so we're going to give it a kind of stop it there and just give it a check. If you leave them in there too long, this thing will begin to like tear the skin. So we don't want to leave them in there any longer than we have to. Uh, but you can see. Uh, this is pretty well a, a naked bird. This bird's not the biggest. Now there was a few feathers left on here, but uh, personally what I like to do is if there's just a few feathers, I'll go ahead and just remove my hand. They're, they're not hard at all. Um, rather than leaving them in there and tumbling them even longer to tear, take a chance on tearing the meat or the skin. So I'll just put these on the table and remove what little bit of feathers is left. Once in a while, we'll get it just right and uh, there won't be anything left. Okay, so normally uh, Emma's twin brother Ian 
cuts the feet, but he's a little camera shy at the moment. Yeah, so we'll just kind of keep pressure on it, and then there's that little bit of a cartilage. Oh, okay. But cut it like that. Now, when I get it that far, it's it's easy to cut with a knife, but I just like to save my knife, and uh, I'll usually just cut the feet off with the scissors from there on out. Yep, right between the knuckle. Okay, and just kind of bending back as you're cutting. There you go. Now go ahead and cut. You've got a pretty good start right there. Just cut it off. Here you go. And kind of pull down a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay. All Alright, so this is uh, the last one we're going to do today. It's 22 or somewhere in that ballpark. And then we're going to move this operation down to the house and finish things up. Now, when you bend these back and you cut them right at that joint, uh, you're gonna favor the foot side of that cartilage and it comes right off pretty good. We're gonna flip him over. We're gonna cut that gland and then we are going to loosen the crawl, the esophagus, and the windpipe. This is the windpipe. Turn your knife around, poke you a hole, pull that out. Some people just run their fingers through there, but uh, I like to just turn the knife away, poke me a hole, and then pull. And then that'll free the windpipe, the esophagus, and the crawl that is attached right here, I don't know how much you have to detach that. It's been coming out fairly well, but uh, if you kind of loosen it up right here, it does help. You can see that it's uh, attached to the, one of the breasts and it's attached to the skin. And what I do, I don't know that it's necessary, but I, I free that up. And then when you turn it around to this side, you're gonna cut a slit and be careful there not to cut into anything you're not supposed to. Now, there's a gallbladder, or a gizzard, I should say, right there. Usually in the upper portion of that, but you can see it right there. Normally, when you grab a hold of that gizzard, that's what you want to grab first to start pulling, and everything will start coming from the front end. Right there's a gizzard and windpipe that we loosened up from that side. Once you get everything out, you're gonna cut down. You can see the, this is the hip. I guess it's called a hip. Uh, we're gonna cut right alongside that all the way down. Same thing on this side. You're gonna cut along that hip and then all the way down the vent, all the way down. And then a lot of people go from the bottom up. I don't think it matters as long as you don't get that uh, bladder sack. And I just cut my way down. Then everything else is ready for the dump bucket, scrap bucket, cut the tail. The only thing left is the heart and the lungs. There's the heart, a little bit of the liver there. And there is one lung. Again, I'm just gonna leave the kidneys. They're kind of attached in there like lungs. I'm just gonna leave that because we're gonna put this in a stock pot to make broth. We're just gonna cook it down. And uh, so we're not going to worry too much about that. All right, so there is that. I believe everything's done. Now, sometimes if you uh, wanted to just do your whole bird, you could cut just a little bit of a slit, put your leg in there. No, I'm getting in the way of the camera. Put your leg in there and then there you have a bird that's ready to shrink wrap vacuum seal or you can freeze whole um, if we were going to do this whole i would probably remove the neck but uh that's just a preference but anyway this is the last one we're going to move this operation into the kitchen and uh, we'll meet with you there all right, so we've moved everything back to the kitchen and uh, this is where we take the chickens that we uh, prepared, they were left whole. We bring them back into the kitchen and we're gonna pour them all up 
Uh, Christy has some that she's going to be canning. Uh, she's going to be making broth uh, from some of the stock. And uh, we're going to be vacuum sealing and freezing the rest of it. You can see here what we've got. Uh, this is basically what you end up with after you quarter one up. We've got the two chicken breasts. These are the chicken tenders. And then the wings. You've got your legs and your thighs. Now we went ahead and removed the skin and the bone from the thigh. Uh, because we have intentions on canning them. A lot of times we'll just leave the bone and the skin on the thigh when we're going to vacuum seal and freeze. Well, I'm going to grab one, kind of take you through the process. And these are very cold. And the well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the leg. We'll pick it up by the leg, just kind of cut from underneath, letting the weight of it just kind of help us a little bit. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Got it back through there, back through there. We want to pop the, the hip joints and this one, there you go. And then we'll work our way around that joint just like that. And there's the quarter. We'll do the same thing on this side. All right, now we want to separate these. And so what we'll do is we, I like to flip them over um, to the inside and cut along the, between the drum and the thigh. And I want to favor the drum. Favor the drum, that's where the joint's at and it comes apart much easier. So there you have the thigh, bone in, skin on. And again, you'll cut along there. You'll cut in favor of the drum. Comes through just like that. Again, and then she's gonna, we usually just uh, freeze these, vacuum seal them like they are, but she's gonna remove the skin and debone uh, because she's canning. All right, so now we move on to the wing section. And we're just gonna start kind of cutting underneath the wing. Kind of get down in there just a little bit deep because that is where the joint is on the wing. Kind of just work your way through there like that. You can see the cartilage coming through and you're in two. All right, so I take my scissors and I'm gonna remove the wing tip. That'll go in the stock pot. And on this particular one, we separate that, kind of give it a cut. And now we're going to, instead of favoring the drum, we're going to favor the wing side. And you can kind of see, kind of, just like so. And there's your wing. Okay, so when we get to the breast section, I'd like to be able to just score me a line down both sides of the spine and then we get to the wishbone part and just kind of cut it in there just a little bit deeper and then i like to lay the burr down on its side it's just so much easier to handle and you can almost take your fingers and start to separate that now you'll realize that there's two sections of meat there you've got your chicken breast and then you got your chicken tender and what i'm doing now is i'm just separating the breast from the tender. Leave the bird right on its side and I just take my knife and I just kind of run my knife right along the underneath side of the tender. And then I'll just kind of fillet it out like I'm doing there. And there's your tender. And there's always that piece of gristle on the end. I like to just kind of cut that off and that'll go into the stock pot to help make some broth. Just wanna clean that up a little bit. And uh, there we go. I will do the same thing down this side. Kinda of cut down the backbone, down into that wishbone, lay it on its side. And you can see already, without even having to do much cutting, they'll, they'll kinda of automatically wanna separate and uh, 
So you just kind of cut the breast away from the filet or the tender. Again, everybody's got their, their own way. I'm by no means a professional, but there's your breast. Lay that there. Just continue to leave it laying right on its side. Run your knife underneath. Take your thumb and just kind of help bring it out and just kind of like you would do a filet just finish bringing your chicken tender right out so there's that one again we'll clean it up just a little bit all this stuff that we're cleaning off of it it's not waste it'll go into the stock pot for broth there you go we'll throw all this into the stock pot and uh, we're done okay so Basically what we have left after we've done, removed all everything from the bird is just the carcass. And we don't throw those away. We make uh, chicken broth out of them. So what we'll do is we'll throw all these into this pot. And you can see right here, um, Chrissy's got carrots, onions, um, different vegetables, spices that her and the girls will begin to chop up and throw in here. And uh, it makes some wonderful chicken broth. So. We're packing the drumsticks again. We have a large family, so we put quite a few in each pack. I also vacuum seal mine on waste. vacuum seal and I always seal twice just to be on the safe side. So we've got uh, a vacuum seal package full of the chicken breast and the drums and we're going to continue to vacuum seal some of these others. We're going to can the chicken thighs so I've got my jar pretty much full. You want to leave about an inch head space and I try to make sure all the air is out of my jar. So I try to pack it in tight, get all the air out. I use a fourth a teaspoon of salt and another half a teaspoon of this mixture just to give it a flavor. And I just pour it on the top there. I use vinegar to clean around the tops of my jars to make sure there's nothing there that would keep it from getting a, a good seal. Uh, we've also washed our jars and I keep them heated in with warm water and then we heat up our flats so we'll get a better seal. You want to just um, finger tight with the, the ring. If you tighten it too much then as it's canon it will buckle and you won't get a good seal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.